tea drinking is a bit different than the customs we know from England at 4.30 or the elaborate ritual of the tea ceremony in Japan. It is less complicated and very straightforward, kind of like the Turks themselves. Get your glass poured. You plunk in one or two sugars according to your taste. Take your spoon, stir it. Make a lot of noise with that spoon. A lot of noise. Hold it by the edge because it's very, very hot. Sip very slowly because it's hot and also because you're going to have to drink several of these glasses. Just like potato chips, you just can't have one for etiquette requires that at least three be served to you. So that means you're going to be drinking a lot of tea in Turkey at all hours of the day. So as I said, in my eyes, this little glass of tea is the symbol of all of Turkey. Turkish tea is ruby red. Not black or green, but red. Red is the spirited, patriotic blood flowing in the heart of every Turk. Red is their flag they wave with great pride. Red as the rich wool of the colorful carpets they weave. Red as the dancing tulips of their springtime meadows. The form of those tulips is reflected in the very shape of the tea glass itself. Turkish tea is hot. Hot as the sun that beats down on the Anatolian plain and hot as the cheerful enthusiasm that Turks show for their music, their food, their cities, their sports teams, and above all, for their families. It is as hot as their joy of life lived in the moment. Turkish tea is brewed. No tea bags allowed. An army of pots of this loose-leaf tea from the Black Sea region stands brewing at all times and everywhere in this country, ready to serve and pour. In Turkey, you don't say breakfast is ready. You say the tea has steeped. This tea is brewed just like the country of Turkey, distilled with a rich heritage of culture, history, traditions, local customs with many diverse ethnic groups, as I said, infusing into a strong tea of national identity. To be a Turk is to be a fully brewed citizen of the Republic of Turkey. Turkish tea is clear. No milk allowed. This tea must be drunk clear. Clear as the face of a Turk. Always instantly readable and clear and pure as the hearts they strive to show to their neighbors. tea is ever flowing. There is no end to the flow of this tea. Drunk all day long, from morning till bedtime. Bounteous as the natural beauty of this country of mountains, plains, and sea. Bounteous as the energy that pours forth from this nation of very hardworking people. Turkish tea is musical. This is a country full of very talented musicians with a varied musical culture that rivals ours here in the United States. And I hope you all enjoyed the concert last night. With a wide range of styles from pop folk to arabesque to pop. Yet, that clink clink of the spoon against the side of the tea glass is a sound like none other in the world. And when you think of all of the thousands joining together at the same time in every corner of the country, in homes, in shops, in offices, on sidewalk stands, on ferry boats, and in workshops, it can truly be considered the National Symphony of Turkey. <music> Turkish tea is friendly. Turkish tea is never drunk alone, but always with someone. It is immediately offered to you by a Turk who wants to get to know you. He wants to be your friend. The Turks never do anything alone and still move through life like their ancestral shepherds driving the herds across the plains. They view their lives as a reflection of those around them, starting with the intense bond they share with their families. Turkish tea is slow and easygoing. 
The process of drinking Turkish tea is slow and easy going, just like the way they live their lives. There's always time in their busy days to take pause and relax over a tea. One of the first Turkish expressions you will learn is problem değil. No problem, no sweat. Turkish tea is the original member of the slow food movement. I got very seriously reprimanded this summer because I drank my tea too quickly. I was very, very thirsty. Which I gathered by the look on the man's face and the tone of his voice to be the equivalent of burping aloud. He was not happy I drank it so fast. Turkish tea is peaceful. A glass of tea is offered in all circumstances. When you walk into a shop, in an office, in a home, and as such is a little token of peace. It bestows a gesture of grace unto others. To paraphrase the great 13th century poet Rumi, it says, Come, let us get to know each other a bit in the time it takes for us to sip this tea together. It says, Come, let us take the time from the busy business of our days and slow down a bit. It says, Come, let us share a glass of tea and perhaps we will be both warmed not only by it, but by a new friendship made. It says, come, let us make life warm for ourselves. So that is why I named my book, Yes, I Would Love Another Glass of Tea. In conclusion, there has been much talk of late in the press and in the diplomatic circles about the burgeoning role that Turkey can play, or not, as a peace broker in the Middle East. I'm not a political scientist or an analyst, I'm a storyteller, but I speak as a citizen who wants to live in a world of peace. The most important motivation for me to write, yes I would love another glass of tea, was to share with my fellow Americans the hope that Turkey, this emerging giant of a nation, and show Westerners the face of a Middle Eastern Muslim country that is reasoned, intelligent, and peaceful. A significant step on the path to the future well-being of the world.